Hey guys, my name is Michael Roberts. I'm a travel filmmaker and photographer from New Zealand. I get a lot of people asking about my films and what gear I use. And now while having good gear is important to some extent, I see all too often people telling themselves that it's a reason why they can't create great films. But filmmaking is so much less about what gear you have and so much more about how you tell a story. So I wanted to show you that you can create great content with something that almost everyone has in their pockets every day, their phone. And so today I've teamed up with Sam Mark to bring you my top five tips on shooting cinematic content with your phone. The first tip is to set up your phone for filming and make the most of the features your phone has to offer. Start by rotating your phone to landscape. This will instantly break away from the typical phone footage we're used to seeing, giving a much more natural and cinematic look to your footage. If we dive into the camera settings, there are a few options here that will help with getting us started. The first is our grid. This will add guidelines to your screen, allowing you to use the rule of thirds to line up a subject and structure your composition. Next is frame rate. Almost all phones will give you the option of filming in a higher frame rate, something like 60 or even 120 frames per second. This will mean you can slow down your footage later on, which will give it a smoother, more dramatic feel. This can be great for fast paced action or moments you want to feel a bit grander. However, you often have to sacrifice some quality for higher frame rates, so decide based on what's more important to you for each specific shot. And lastly, we have exposure lock. When you bring up your camera, you can tap on the screen to adjust which part of the image you want to expose for. If you tap and hold it down for a second or two, it will lock the exposure in focus, and from here you can adjust the exposure manually if you need to. By locking the exposure, you'll avoid any flickering or harsh changes in lighting that your phone might make from automatically changing the brightness of your image while you're filming. By setting it manually, you'll maintain a constant brightness throughout your whole shot, even while going from dark to light areas. The second tip is movement. To me, adding movement to your footage is one of the best ways to bring a project to life. I'm always looking for ways to add movement to my films, and using a phone to do that is no different. Get creative with moving the phone side to side, up and down, or even spinning it if you want to. A great way to exaggerate movement is by pushing past something close to the camera, like a rock, grass, or a person. It's super important to keep the phone as stable as possible while moving in order to have your footage come out smooth. For this, you can invest in a gimbal or stabilizer if you want to step it up a notch, but most phones have great stabilization built into them already. If you're filming and walking at the same time, then be sure to bend your knees a bit as you go and concentrate on keeping the phone as still as you can. This will help to smoothen out your steps and absorb some of the bumps so that they don't show as much in your footage. The third tip is to use lenses and filters. These are an ideal way to break the barriers of what's usually possible with a phone and give you more flexibility for creativity. I've spent the last few months filming with Escape ND filters and wide lens from Sandmark. The two are also compatible with each other and can be used at the same time, so to have something like these that can attach right onto your phone is a game changer. The wide lens opens up the perspective of the shot, giving you a two times wider field of view. This is ideal for introducing a scene and to fit more in the frame, perfect for landscapes and outdoors when you want to show the whole picture. It's a great way to add a variety of focal lengths to your film, and with a wider field of view, it really helps to exaggerate your movements, especially as objects move past the edge of frame. The Scape ND filters are the perfect tool for preserving the settings you want, no matter how bright the conditions are. These filters reduce the intensity of light coming into the camera, allowing you to take control of the phone's exposure and shutter speed. Maintaining motion blur is a crucial way of making your footage look cinematic, and so having the option to choose the right filter depending on how bright it is, is ideal for giving your footage that smooth, natural motion blur while filming. The fourth tip is lighting. Lighting can completely change the look and mood of a shot, so it's definitely something that's important to pay attention to. Phones typically don't have the best dynamic range, and so if you want to get the best results out of your images, it's important to film in soft or even lighting to maintain the most amount of detail. One of the best times of day to film is during golden hour. Golden hour is the time just after the sun rises and just before the sun sets, when the sun is low in the sky and the light is much warmer and softer than during the middle of the day. Another great option is to film when it's cloudy or overcast. Cloudy days make for much softer, more evenly spread light and help to avoid any harsh shadows compared to the midday sun, which is especially important while filming people. And lastly, we have time-lapse and hyperlapse. 
Using the time-lapse function of your phone is a great way to add interest and intensity to a film. Start by navigating to time-lapse in your camera and then locking off exposure. Set your phone down somewhere so that the shot doesn't move or shake throughout your time-lapse and let it run. For the best looking time lapse, be sure to film a scene that moves or changes over time, like the sun rising or clouds in the sky. Hyperlapses are very similar to time lapses, except the camera is also moving at the same time. This gives that surreal, intense movement through a scene that really makes people stop and wonder how you got that shot. Start like before by bringing up time lapse and locking off your exposure. But this time, rather than setting the camera down, line up a subject you want to follow with a point on your screen. From here, start the time lapse and then walk towards or side onto your subject, always keeping that same point lined up on your screen as closely as possible. While your phone will help to stabilize a hyperlapse, be sure to bend your knees and walk as smoothly as you can to absorb as many of those bumps as possible. From here, you can add stabilization in post if you really want to polish it up, but this will only work well if you've got smooth footage to begin with. Adding a couple of hyperlapses to a film can really elevate it when used well and add a big wow factor. So get creative. Use a wide angle lens to really exaggerate the movement as things fly past the camera and even try them next time you're in a car or on a plane. I hope you've been able to get something out of these tips and that it sheds some new light on what can be done with just your phone camera. At the end of the day, content is king and the best camera is the one you have with you. So the best advice I can give for creating something exciting is to focus on the content. Get out to unique spots around where you live, go for an adventure and capture the life and excitement that that brings. The great thing about filming with your phone is that it's super easy to bring with you and use, so from there you can focus on practicing and improving. It really comes down to creativity, passion and putting in the time to learn. So go out and create.